Today we're going to be looking at the Panasonic Lumix LX10 LX15 camera. Coming right up. What's up everybody, Phil Bull City Pictures with another product review. Today we're looking at the Panasonic Lumix LX10 or LX15 depending on where you are in the world. Here in the US it's the LX10. It's going to compete and it's the same type of camera as the Sony RX100 and the Canon G7X. It's a compact camera, a premium compact camera they're calling it. It's a pretty nice specs. It does video at uh, 4K. 30p, also 1080p at 60 frames per second, and also high-speed video at up to 120 frames per second. It's got this beautiful Leica f1.4 lens, which they probably display here. It's is a, it's a great lens, very sharp, and also the depth of field is second to none in this class. It's class leading. F1.4 is the widest or fastest lens that you can get in this type of camera. It does have a pop-up screen. And I'm sure a lot of folks are going to be using this as a vlogging camera. Uh, also, pretty good stills camera. It's got all the features that you've come to know if you are a Panasonic shooter. 4K pictures. Also, you can do time lapse. You can do stop motion. You can do post focus where you can actually focus on the or pick the focus point after you've taken the picture. It's a compact little camera. I got this to be my travel camera. I've got the G85, which is what I'm filming this with. Uh, which is still a light camera. It's a little big to fit in the pocket though. This certainly will fit in the pocket. The lens does extend when you power it on as you can see, but once it's powered off it is something that will fit in your pocket for sure. And what I'll do in this review is I'll show you some pictures that I've taken. It's a, again, it's a really good stills camera. It's a 20 megapixel sensor. It does a really good job. It is again a 1 inch sensor so it might not be great in low light I didn't really get this for low light, really was going to use this for travel and probably when things are very well lit. I'll also show you some video. We did some, I did some vlog type video clips which I'll show you. Also look at the autofocus. There were a couple instances where the autofocus just kind of got into a state where it didn't know what to do. Lost focus really badly and in one case couldn't get focus back. I had to actually tap it to focus. But let's head on over to the computer. I'll show you some of those photos. I'll show you some of the video and then we'll come back with my conclusions and we'll wrap things up. So here's some close up photography of some blueberries. You can see the settings of the camera. Also, I'm going to zoom in. This is 400% so you can get an idea on how good this is. Close up. Again, these are straight out of the camera. Nothing done to them. Here's another picture of some blueberries that are working on blossoming. I'm going to zoom in on this again and you can see just how fine the detail is. A 20 megapixel sensor does a pretty darn good job. I've also taken some depth of field type shots, 2.8 on this one. You can see the tree bark, pretty good depth of field. This one's at f1.4. Again, you can see the things are just disappearing in front and behind the focus point. Here's a remote control, f1.4. Again, you can see just that depth of field is unbelievable. Another remote here again, this is f1.4. You can see it just drops off incredibly in front and behind the focus point. Here's something for testing the sharpness, this clock. You see, we'll zoom in on this one, and this is zoomed in again to 400%. You can see just how sharp this is. Here's a couple of the uh, video samples that I took. All right, it's kind of windy out here. Hopefully, microphone noise is not too bad. This is 1080p, 30 frames a second. I've got it set to f11. 1 60th of a second is the shutter speed. One thing to consider is that this does not have an ND filter, so I had to change my aperture all the way to f11, which is as high as it goes, to get something that is close to the correct exposure, where the other two cameras, the Sony and the Canon, do actually have built-in ND filters, so something to think about as you're weighing these potential cameras, but the, again, this is not too bad. Uh, any brighter, it's a fairly bright day out, any brighter might be issues. There's no way to really add an ND filter. There's no filter screw on the front of the lens. So you can probably rig something up, but it would be not really uh, the most stable. But I'm going to do 4K 30p. You notice the field of view here. We're at 30 millimeters. 
and that's a bit of a crop when you do 1080. The crop is even greater. It's 36 millimeters when you do 4K. So I'm gonna switch over to 4K video, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so we're at 4K, 30p now. Same settings, f11 aperture, 1 60th of a second for video, 30 frames per second. You can see now the field of view is much less. It's again 36 millimeters, so there is that crop at 4K. And the exposure luckily does look good. I'm at ISO 125. I was at ISO 125 on the other clips, which is as low as this will go. So uh, here's the video. You're going to see everything in focus now, even though this does have a 1 4 aperture because of the light and the not having an ND filter. I can't set it to 1 4. It would be way overexposed, so I had to stop it down as much as it possibly could go to f11. Again, just something to consider as you're weighing the options for all the different cameras out there. The other two, the Sony and the Canon do have ND filters. So again, 4K, 30p, here's the field of view. Oop, focus lost me. Big time. Here we go. Picked up my eye quickly. So. Focus hiccups there. Why? Lost me again. Now you've seen what the camera can do, both stills and video. I really do enjoy using this camera. It is small. It goes with me everywhere. I can fit it in my pocket. And I actually bought a case as well that will fit on my belt. And it is, it's got some heft to it. It's very solid, good build quality. Um, really, the major con that I see is, and this bothers me. I don't know why it bothers me so much. But this is the, the ports for HDMI and to connect your USB cable either to charge it or to connect and it just doesn't it's not made very well it doesn't get out of the way it kind of flips back and when you're trying to put the the cords in it's very difficult to use and it's just this cheap flimsy plastic and it does kind of snap in but it's really not great so on a camera that has great build quality and everything is really rock solid that just really bothers me <laughs> again it's probably a minor thing for a lot of people but to me it uh, it bothers me so uh, really, I, I don't see any cons other than that. The fact that it is a one-inch sensor and it won't do well in low light, that's just the class of camera. Really nothing against the camera itself. You're not going to get great low light performance like you would say a, an APS-C or a full frame sensor. This is the Panasonic Lumix LX10 here in the US, LX15 everywhere else. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. Also, if you do subscribe, click on that little bell icon. You'll get notified when we upload videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again on the next video.